any stocks of any unconventional weapon, any chemical weapon, if the, it exists, it won't be used never ever against civilian, against the Syrian people. The spokesman of the foreign ministry says the Syrians have sovereignty and the capacity to determine their own future. Maqdis says Syria is targeted by a foreign media campaign under the pretext of the alleged use of weapons of mass destruction. And our armed forces restore security to Razi fields and chase the remains of the terrorists in Asayra Zainab. Many casualties are inflicted on terrorist groups in Aleppo area by our armored forces, destroying their vehicles and capturing large quantities of weapons. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the CNR Television in Damascus. Foreign and Expatriates Ministry spokesperson Dr. Jihad Maqdisi today stressed that Syria will not use any chemical weapons if they exist during the internal crisis in Syria. Speaking at a press conference, Maqdisi added that Syria is facing an external media campaign under claims of possibility that Damascus is using weapons of mass destruction. He stressed that any chemical weapons are monitored and guarded by the Syrian Arab Army and will only be used in case of external aggression on Syria. It's regarding the WMD and the, all the allegations in the media against Syria. Uh, we, at, the, at the Syrian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have just said that any stocks of WMD or any unconventional weapon that the Syrian Arab Republic possess would never, would never be used against civilian or against the Syrian people during this crisis at any circumstances, no matter how the crisis would evolve, no matter how. So this is the, the, the title. All the stocks of these uh, weapons that the Syrian Arab Republic possess are monitored, uh, monitored and guarded by the Syrian army. These weapons are meant to be used only and strictly in the event of external aggression against the Syrian Arab Republic. So I just wanted to clarify this for the Western audience. Maghlisi added that the Syrian people is sovereign and they are the one to decide their country's future through a national dialogue table adding that national dialogue results are to be committed to. All who take up weapons in the face of the state cannot be responded to except in the same way, he said, adding that the doors are open to all who call for dialogue. After cleaning Al Midan and Al Qamun quarters of the armed terrorist groups and killing a large number of them, the Syrian Arab Armed Forces discovered among them terrorists of various nationalities, including Egyptians, Jordanians. This showed that various Arab and regional states were involved in providing an environment, embracing and supporting terrorism. Day by day, the role of some states is exposed as they continue to bring terrorists to give them training and to smuggle them into Syria. After chasing these terrorists in Al Midan and Al Qaboon, our armed forces discovered that some of the dead terrorists carried the nationalities of some Arab states. Some of those terrorists came from Egypt, Jordan and Tunisia to commit crimes in Syria. Turkey and some other states along our borders give shelter and weapons to these terrorists. The correspondent of Agence France Press reported the existence of more than 150 terrorists from several Arab, Islamic and African countries along the Syrio-Turkish border in Bab el Hawa. Those terrorists belong to extremist religious organizations. They carried heavy machine guns, rocket launchers and handmade mines. The British Daily, The Times, asserted that the so-called rebels in Syria were no more than mercenaries receiving money and weapons from foreign countries in order to carry out raids and ambushes. The following report shows the pursuit of terrorists in escaping in mercenaries by our armed forces in the fields of Arazi, where bases for launching rockets were found. The Syrian army is continuing to follow down the terrorists who destroyed everywhere, here and in Bastan Razi. 
The terrorists were hiding in the narrow neighborhoods, terrorizing the citizens and destroying their cars and their homes. The Syrian army did a fast qualitative operation to chase down the terrorist remains in the Bistana Razi. They besieged, killed, and wounded a number of them. They also arrested others as they were hiding inside the sewages. A number of the terrorists escaped into the cactus farms, and now the Syrian army is ready to attack there. <laughs> We came to Al-Mazi, to the Bastan Razi area, in response to the citizens' calls. We clashed with the terrorist remains in the Bastan Razi area, and they were hiding in the sewages. The citizens of Bastan Razi narrated the truth about what happened here. It was a horrible situation. It was like a city of ghosts. Masked and armed groups came into here terrorizing us. Thank God the army came after all. They made us a shield for them. The army came now and we felt safe. Three days ago, the terrorist gangs came into here. They were killing and insulting innocent people. The terrorists came here and manipulated the young men in order to make them join these terrorist gangs. But thank God the young men were aware now we feel safe. In addition, the Syrian army found handmade missiles, pistols, PKC machine guns, explosive devices, bombs, rocket-propelled grenade launchers, and Israeli-made shells. In addition to the wireless devices, military uniforms, electronic detonators, and some stolen medical devices and drugs. In collaboration with the Damascus Governorate and the General Establishment of Consumer Goods, a campaign was carried out to provide the people of Al Midani Quarter with services and food supplies. The quarter has regained its normal life and stability after the crimes of the terrorist killers there. The bodies concerned are exerting all the necessary efforts to repair the damages and restore normal life. Food supplies are being made available at cheap prices. We have taken some goods. They brought water and food stuff and cleaners. Thank God they are repairing the electricity. Everything is okay. We need nothing. Yes, the bakeries are open today. This morning, we took bread from the bakery here in al Qa'a, but the gas hasn't arrived yet. The situation is safe and we slept in our homes. According to the directives of the governor yesterday to the power and electricity director to provide and repair the electricity grid for all the neighborhood, but this takes time. So the governor has put a needed five-day plan to provide the electricity, water and all the services in addition to the telephone links. Al-Maidan thus remains steadfast and capable of overcoming the vicious terrorists. Our armed forces continue their task of spreading security in the areas suffered from the crimes of armed terrorists. Many of those terrorists have been killed, wounded or captured with their weapons and equipment. They thought that their mercenaries would divide and destroy Syria through striking against the morale of the Syrian Arab army by spreading false news. They seem to have forgotten that they are dealing with Syria's great people and valiant army who have historically confronted and defeated imperialism. In Aleppo, our security forces clashed with terrorist groups and destroyed three of their vehicles, killing a large number of them, including their leaders Mahmoud al-Ashqar and Omar al-Ahmad. Another unit of our armed forces clashed with another terrorist group, killing five terrorists, including two non-Syrians, and capturing various kinds of weapons. In the village of Hretan, our armed forces staged several ambushes that led to the death of many terrorists, while some of them surrendered. In Hama, our armed forces stormed the hiding places of the terrorists in al Ba'ath quarter, killing a large number of armed terrorists and capturing many others. Various weapons and military equipment were also captured, including RPGs, ammunition, and wireless equipment. Security forces chased the escaping terrorists in the area of al Diabia and Sayyida Zainab in Damascus countryside. They sustained many casualties and a number of them threw down their weapons and surrendered. The security forces also destroyed a number of vehicles used by the terrorists and captured large amounts of various weapons and ammunitions. 
They also stormed hideouts used as field hospitals and other places to torture kidnapped citizens. In Idlib, our security forces chased armed terrorists in the countryside, inflicting heavy casualties among them. The dead terrorists included Muhammad al Baik, Khalid Isa, Abdel Majid Jadu, Nasif al Ahmad, and Zatouf Ramadan. In related context, our security forces foiled attempts by armed terrorist gangs to infiltrate into Syria in various places in the area of Talkalakh in Homs countryside. The terrorists tried to smuggle weapons carried by mules from al Bire in Lebanon into Syria. The clashes led to several casualties among the terrorists, while the rest of them ran away towards Lebanese territories. Intelligence reports by the CIA pointed out to a theory claiming that the terrorist explosion in the building of the national security in Damascus was not necessarily carried out by armed terrorists. The story contains indications to a blow carried out by intelligence body. Fingers are pointed out in this theory against Turkey, which has common capacities and interests with the Americans. In order to break terrorism and its crimes, a team of young volunteers in the Governorate of Damascus carried out a campaign of cleaning in Al Muhajirin quarter. The campaign aims at spreading the culture of environmental awareness and the sense of responsibility for the work of employees engaged in cleaning our streets. And with this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. For more news about Syria and the region, you can visit our website in English, www.syriaonline.sy. Now over to economic news with Vani.